So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the derivation of the product rule. First, some derivative properties from before. If I have a function plus a constant, the derivative of that is going to be the derivative of the function plus zero, because the derivative of the constant is zero. Therefore, that's just f prime of x. If I have the derivative of a coefficient times the function, well, that's going to be the derivative of f times the co coefficient. If I have the derivative of the sum of two functions, it's the sum of the individual derivatives. And if I have the derivative of the difference of two functions, the derivative is equal to the difference of the two individual derivatives. But what about the derivative with respect to x of the product of two functions? How does that work? So let's go back with some background here. So once again, we're at a value of x and go down the road, value x plus h to a value of x plus h. And so the change in our height value is going to be f of x plus h minus f of x. So it's a little change in our function's height. And we're going to represent that by delta f. So delta f is f of x plus h minus f of x. Therefore, the derivative f prime of x, remembering that the distance went down the road is a distance of h, would be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now, if we were to use our delta f notation, f prime of x will be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of delta f over h. So that's something we're going to keep in mind for later down the road. So therefore, the derivative with respect to x of the product of f and g, using the limit definition of the derivative, will be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x and all of that's over h. To get a handle on the algebra here, let's look at a bit of a visual representation of this. So imagine visualizing here a rectangle. And the area of the rectangle is going to be equal to the sum of the four individual rectangles. So let's call the height of this rectangle f of x plus h and the width of it g of x plus h. Remembering back to how we defined f of x plus h, we can apply that here. And so I'm going to separate the two individual widths into the following expressions. The first one is going to be a value of g of x. And the other part is delta g. vertical here, we've got that's f of x, and then the top portion is delta f. So remembering back to earlier in the video, we have f of x plus h minus f of x. All of that is equal to delta f. So therefore, if we move f of x to the other side, f of x plus h is indeed equal to delta f plus f of x. So that represents the vertical component of your rectangle here. And by the same logic, uh, we can do that for g of x. Now let's find the actual individual areas. So to find that area, we take the product of f times g. To find the top right-handed one, we find delta f times g of x. To find the lower left, it would be f of x times delta g. And the upper one would be delta f times delta g. And once again, by adding up all four of those rectangles, we get the ultimate product f of x plus h times g of x plus h. So let's go ahead and do that and then see how this ends up in terms of our ultimate goal. 
So that's what we're going to be splitting f of x plus h minus g uh, times g of x plus h into its component pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x. That's all over h. We're going to be taking the limit as h goes to zero. All right, so let's go now and let's make our substitution. So here we have the following <laughs> rectangles added up together. We'll take delta f times g of x plus f of x times delta g plus f of x times g of x plus delta f times delta g. So that just represents the first component of our numerator's expression, which I'll highlight for you yellow. Now, from that, we still have to subtract the product f times g. So let's go ahead and do that. So minus f of x times g of x. And all of this is going to be over h. So now, if you noticed in the numerator, we have f of x times g of x should drop out. And then after that, we're going to break it up into the three individual fractions. So we've got the limit as h approaches 0 of delta f times g over h plus f times delta g. plus delta f times delta g over h. And because of the properties of limits, we're able to break these three limits apart into individual limits. So we've got the limit as h approaches 0 of delta f over h times g of x. And if you notice, I'm rewriting it in a very specific way here. You'll see why in just a moment. Plus the limit is h approaches 0 of f of x times delta g over h plus the limit as h approaches 0 of delta f over h. And then I'm going to multiply by a form of 1, and the reason I can do this is because h is not 0, but it's approaching 0. So I can multiply by h over h. So that way, you'll see in just a moment what uh, occurs when you do that. So let's look at the first term here. When we take the limit as h approaches 0 of delta f over h times g of x, we can pull g of x out since that's not the variable with respect to what we're taking the limit of. So we've got the limit as h approaches 0 of delta f over h, which is f prime of x. So we've got g of x times f prime of x. The second term, by the same exact logic, we can pull out the f of x, and therefore we have f of x times the limit as h approaches 0 of delta g over h, which that, going back to our very beginning of the video, is equal to g prime. So we've got f prime, f times g prime of x. And finally, the third term, looking at this one, we have the limit of delta f over h times delta g over h times h, which you can break up into three individual limits. And you'll notice that the first one's f prime, the second one's g prime, and the limit is h approaches 0 of h goes to 0. So therefore, that
therefore, the derivative with respect to x of the product of f of x times g of x is equal to the derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. So let's go ahead and apply this to an example problem. So we've got the product of 3x squared plus 5x times 2 the x. So m prime of x is take the derivative of your first function. So that would be 6x to the first plus 5 times, now keep your second function, just 2x. And then add to that your first function times the derivative of your second function. simplify unless if you're actually using this for uh, an application problem. So we've got derivative of the first times the second function plus first function times the derivative of the second function. 